A fiery horse with the speed of light, a cloud of dust, and a hearty Hyo Silver. The Lone Ranger. Before this exciting adventure, a word from our sponsor. General Mills, makers of Cheerios, the oat cereal that's ready to eat, Betty Crocker mixes, and Wheaties, the breakfast of champions. Present by special recording, The Lone Ranger. Here's a swell idea that can make studying a real pleasure. Before you do your homework at night, mix up some Betty Crocker gingerbread and pop it in the oven. Then, by the time you've finished your assignments, you'll have a treat of piping hot, spicy-smelling gingerbread waiting for you. Doesn't that sound great? Mmm, there's nothing like a glass of milk and a big piece of freshly baked gingerbread to make a guy feel good all over. And is it ever easy to bake with Betty Crocker gingerbread mix? All the mouth-watering spices and good things are right in the package. You just add water, beat and bake. It's fun, and it'll hardly take you any time at all. Even kids can bake up perfect gingerbread with Betty Crocker gingerbread mix. It's guaranteed perfect by Betty Crocker of General Mills, Minneapolis. So be sure to bake some next time you do your homework. You'll love it, because Betty Crocker gingerbread is the real go-to-the-head-of-the-class kind. With his faithful Indian companion Toto, the daring and resourceful mask rider of the plains led the fight for law and order in the early western United States. Nowhere in the pages of history can one find a greater champion of justice. Return with us now to those thrilling days of yesteryear. From out of the past come the thundering hoofbeats of the great horse Silver. The Lone Ranger rides again. Come on, Silver. Let's go, big fellow. Are you Silver? John Marks, known to everyone as Miser Marks, lived alone in an old house a few miles from Roper City in southern Oklahoma. He went into town for supplies only a couple of times a month, and four times a year, he had a meeting with the banker. Get it! Get along there! After one of these meetings, he was about halfway home, when three men from town suddenly appeared from behind big boulders. They flourished guns and shouted, All right, Mark, stop where you are! You will be there, we'll shoot! Oh, 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 there! Yeah, that's it, Mark. Crowder! What's this mean? Do as you're told, you'll soon find out. I had this man. <laughs> See if he's packing a gun, Steve. Sure. Jake, you take charge of his hall. Right. If this is a robbery... You guessed it, Marks. He's not armed, Crowder. I didn't think he'd be. He's too stingy to buy a gun. Crowder, you're wasting your time. I'm a poor Don't man. Don't tell us that. We know you call on the banker four times a year. Ask the banker. He'll tell you that I don't even have a bank account. Because you keep your cash at home. I learned about you in a roundabout way. You own a lot of bonds, and you go to the bank to collect the interest on them. Search him, boys. Right. You'll be sorry. Hey, look here, Carter. Cash. And here's his bond. Yeah, quite a bundle of them. Well, they're worthless to you. They're registered in my name. You can't get anything for them. Only a few hundred in cash, Carter. Oh, take the money, but leave me the bonds. You've been collecting interest on these bonds for a long time, Mark. You must have a tidy sum hoarded away. Give me those bonds. Hey, he grabbed the bonds, running away. Stop real fire. I'm back, you old skin flint. You got him, Carter. Yeah, warned him. Let's get the bonds. Should have known better than to make a break like that. He moved mighty sudden, snatched the bonds right out of my hand. See if he's dead. Yeah. He is. Here's the bonds. Yeah, that's a bad break. Why? We planned to kill him anyhow, so he couldn't tell the law about us. I wanted to make him tell where he's hidden his cash before we shot him. It must be somewhere in his house. Yeah, and now we'll have to search for it. I hope to get it the easy way. Give me those bonds, Jake. Sure. I've got everything planned to use the bonds to frame a man for the murder of Miser Marks. You have? Yeah. <laughs> In my saddlebags, I have the clothes I'll need in connection with the plans. 
I've even picked the man to frame. Oh, why go to all that trouble? Why don't we just take the cash and clear out? There's more cash hidden in Mark's house. I want that, too. Well, let's try to find it before we clear out. With our reputations, the sheriff is sure to suspect us when he hears of Mark's death. If we've cleared out of town, he'll be sure we're guilty. There'll be a manhunt for us. And, ah. and I don't want to be dodging the law. We've got to get back to town and behave the same as usual until someone's hanged for Mark's murder. Then the case will be closed... And we can go away and live high on the old miser's money. If we can find where it's hidden. It's somewhere in this house. Now I'll go to town to arrange the frame up. I'll take the bonds and some of the money with me. You boys wait here and while I'm gone, dig a shallow grave and bury marks. We got All you. Right. That night, shortly after dark, Tonto, the Indian friend of the Lone Ranger, rode toward Roper City. He intended to camp among the big boulders, which were a familiar landmark. As he turned his paint horse off the trail and approached the rocks, Jake stepped into view. In the moonlight, Tonto could see that he held a gun. Hold it, stranger! Oh, gone. Oh, fella. Who? Oh. Where are you going? Why, me. Camp among the trees. Now, you're too late. I've already made camp there, and I don't want company. So move on. Now, me not know you there. Now, me go. Get him up, scout. About an hour later, a lone ranger riding from another direction saw the moonlit boulders where he planned to meet Tonto. He also saw a man riding from the direction of town turn off the trail and guide his horse out of sight behind the boulders. Hold it, hold it. Easy, big fellow. Well, it looks as though someone else is there instead of Tonto. I'd better investigate. Wait here, boy. Leaving Silver at ground hitch, the masked man moved silently toward the rocks. Presently, he was near enough to hear voices and knew that more than one man occupied the campsite. He moved still closer and heard... When you got through, what'd you do with the clothes you wore? Burned them in the fireplace while I was in Shag's house planting the barn. Did you make sure they were burned complete so no trace of them will be found? I made sure. Where'd you hide the barns? <laughs> Beneath Shag's mattress. And I gave $50 to Shag. He's really framed tight. Sooner or later, someone will see Mark's horse wandering around and tell the sheriff. The sheriff will wonder what happened to Mark. Chances are he'll go to Mark's place. Right. As soon as he sees the signs of a robbery, he'll remember how Shag was spending money tonight. And he'll go after Shag. And find the evidence you planted. <laughs> Mighty slick. We're in the clear. Sure we are. No one even suspects we've been near the miser's place. Of course, an engine saw me here tonight. It, what engine? Oh, he came here and tended to camp. I sent him on his way. An engine, huh? Last I saw him, he was heading towards town. Well, in that case, I reckon we've nothing to worry about. The Lone Ranger, having learned that Tonto had gone to Roper City, moved silently away from the rocks. Wondering about the conversation, he was heading for town when Steve said... What are we waiting for, Carter? Let's go to Mark's place and start looking for the cash. No, no, it's too risky to go there now. The moonlight's bright enough to read by. Someone riding near the house might see our horses. You mean we gotta wait till the moon sets? Yeah. It sets early tonight, and we don't have long to wait. Meantime, Tonto waited in Roper City. He sat at a table close to the front window of the cafe and divided his attention between his horse, tethered to the hitch rail outside, and a grizzled old man who sat at a nearby table spending money freely. Hey there, Baldy. I want better service. Tonight I'm a cash customer. All right, all right. Wait a minute. <laughs> While Tonto watched, the sheriff approached the ragged old fellow. Well, hi there, sheriff. Sit down, be my guest. I want to talk to you, Shag. Yeah, sure thing. You gave Baldy a $50 bill. That's right. You gave me change. I still have... I've never known you to have more than a couple of dollars at a time. Where'd you get a $50 bill? A stranger gave it to me for holding his horse. 
You expect me to believe that? Well, it's true. I was standing near the end of the street when this fellow came up and dismounted. He asked me to hold his horse. I saw him walk between a couple of buildings, and in a few minutes he was back. He handed me the bill and rode away. You lying old ruin. No one in his right mind would pay that much for holding a horse. Yeah, maybe he made a mistake. <laughs> I thought it was a one dollar bill till I got inside here. Then oh, I wait, saw wait a minute. What did the stranger look like? Well, he wore a long tail coat and had a big had big bushy whiskers yeah. and shock of black hair, no hat and he had eyeglasses. I never saw anyone like that around town. Well, neither did I until tonight. <laughs> I'd like to see a fellow like him more often. <laughs> Sounds mighty thin to me, Shag. If I hear of anyone being robbed of a $50 bill, I'll know just where to look for the gent who's stolen. As the sheriff moved away, Tonto glanced through the window and saw the great horse Silver standing next to Scout. He hurried outside. The Lone Ranger is standing in the dark alley between the cafe and the hotel, with his hat drawn low over his eyes, called softly. Here I am, Toto. Kimasabi. Me not able to camp near Boulder. Yes, I know. I heard the men there speak of you, so I came on to town. Me hope you'd come here. That why me tie scout where you sure to see him. That was a good idea. And me not know other place to camp, so me get room in hotel. Oh, oh here, Dorky. You go in back way, no one see mask. I'll take the key, but we've some writing to do before we go to the room. Oh? And where we go? To John Mark's house. Why we go there? The three men who were camped at the big boulders were talking about Mark's. They said something about a robbery and a frame-up. We tell Sheriff? Yes. First, I want to know more about the situation at Mark's house. Let's go. Be uh, ready, Come on, Come on. Come Traveling a roundabout route to avoid passing the men who were camped at the big boulders, the Lone Ranger and Tonto soon reached the miser's home. Leaving their horses concealed in the nearby woods, they approached the dark house and rapped on the door. After waiting a moment, the masked man tried the door and found it locked. Tonto, the situation justifies breaking the lock. We'll continue our Lone Ranger adventure in just a moment. All over the country, in every direction, how you, how you doing is the question. And here's what the happy, happy people have to say. Eating our weenies and the do, 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 and okay. Okay. Sure enough, take Midwestern champions, for instance. When Bobby Feller takes the mound... The outfield boys sit on the ground. That Wheaties pitching leaves them there, watching batters fan the air. And when we name our Wheaties crew, Big Ted Klazuski's in there, too. He'll face those hurlers day or night and knock their fastballs out of sight. Bob Feller and Ted Klazuski both know that Wheaties magic. There's a whole kernel of wheat in every Wheaties flake. Wheaties, breakfast of champions. Keep on eating your weenies and you'll be doo-doo-doo-doo-and okay, okay. Now to continue. Inside the one-room house of Miser Marks, the Lone Ranger and Tonto saw that the windows were closely shuttered. They lighted a candle. Their search revealed nothing out of order. No sign of a robbery. There are ladders that lead through ceiling. There's probably a loft above this room. Now look up there. Meanwhile, the moon had set, and the three killers rode in darkness toward the small house. <laughs> Seeing the light beneath the door, they drew rein, left their horses, and advanced on foot. Jake found a loose slat in one of the window shutters. Looking inside, he said, Hey, 
I see the same engine I chased away from the boulders. Yeah. He's found a loose rock in the fireplace. We'll go in first. Come on. Don't move! Uh-huh. All right, Jake, take his gun. Right. Uh, why are you... I'll ask the questions. What are you doing here, engine? Me? Uh, me. Come, look around. We saw you poking around the fireplace. You came to rob the owner of this place, didn't you? No, that's not true. Here's some rope, Carter. Good time. Then keep an eye on him while we get what we came for. All right. Now give me your hands, didn't you? He pulled a loose stone out of the fireplace. Yeah. I'll see if there's anything behind it. Hey, maybe that's the old man's hiding place. Yeah. Find anything? Yeah. Say, look, paper money, right, package huh? of it. Great day. Must be a fortune here. We're rich. No, you're not. Uh, rich. Matt, hold it. Don't try for a gun. Where'd you come from? I was watching the door. I came down the ladder from the attic. Stand over there, all three of you. Keep your hands high. Yeah, yeah, I don't shoot. Right. Hold your hands toward me, Toto. I'll cut that rope. Uh-huh. Hey, listen, my students. We're all in the same game. There, Toto. Disarm those men. Uh-huh. You came here for the cash, and so did we. Why can't we make a deal? Why should I make a deal? Uh, here, guns. Put them on the table, Toto, and take that cash. Listen, mister. It'll be worthwhile to split that money with us. I fixed it so none of us will be suspected for the robbery. You better listen to Crowder. You'll never get away with stealing that money. Sheriff Craig will get you for sure unless you cut us in. What can you do to earn a share of the cash? I'll tell you when we're partners. You're covered, man. Sheriff Craig. And his deputy. Drop that gun or I'll shoot. You too, Indian. We'd better obey, Toto. Say, Sheriff, you and your deputy saved our lives. That masked man and the Indian were going to kill us. What are you and your pals doing here, Crowder? Well, we were riding by and saw the police lighted. That made us curious because it's not like marks to waste candles. We looked through the busted shutter and saw those two stealing that bundle of cash from behind the fireplace rock. Hmm. We came in, but... They got the drop on us. Mm, sounds reasonable. It sounds very convincing, Sheriff. But the truth is, Crowder and his friends plan to steal John Mark's money. That's what I'd expect you to claim, mister. Should I handcuff him, Sheriff? Yes, I'll keep him covered. What uh, What brought you here, Sheriff? Mark's horse came into town. I wondered what had happened to the old man. Brought my deputy with me to investigate. Here's the bracelets, mister. Stick out your hands. The Lone Ranger seemed submissive. He held his hands toward the deputy, then suddenly lunged forward. You gave the deputy a hard shove. Look out! And sent him staggering against the sheriff. You take this! At the same instant, Toto leaped into action. He drove a fist to the chin of the off-balance sheriff, while the Lone Ranger swung a fist to the deputy's chin. Right, you! Both lawmen were on the floor unconscious. The masked man, moving quickly, picked up his gun and said... We're taking this cash, Crowder, but I want to talk to you before we leave. What, What do you want? Before the sheriff came, he said something about a plan. Well, yeah. Is it too late for your plan to do us any good? Uh, my plan will still be worth a lot to you, mister. Uh, room nine at the Rover City Hotel. Uh, Come at midnight. If you think you have something worth half this money. Say, you're all right. You'll find I'm dangerous if you try a double cross. Don't worry, mister. <laughs> I'm on your side. <laughs> Leaving the miser's house, the Lone Ranger and Toto hurried into the woods, mounted their horses, and rode away. Come on, Toto. Get him up. It was an easy matter for the masked man to enter a rear door of the hotel and reach the first floor room without being seen. In the room, he and Toto were alert and expectant at midnight. Stand to one side, Tonto, and cover me while I open the door. Huh. Be ready. Hello, Crowley. Howdy. Still masked, huh? Come in. Yeah. Howdy, Engine. How? Where are your friends? In the cafe next door. You, uh, said you had a plan. I have. You see, I had another gent all framed to take the rap for the robbery. Oh? Who? Oh. <laughs> I'm not telling until I have my hands on half that cash. You'll have to do a lot more talking before you even see the money. All right, I'll tell you some more. Go ahead. I uh, dressed in a fancy disguise and gave an old fellow $50 to hold my horse for 10 minutes. 
I knew he'd spend the cash free and easy and make the sheriff suspicious. <laughs> he did just that. What has that to do with the Marks robbery? The sheriff thinks the old fellow's explanation of how he got the money is mighty thin. If he has any idea the critter had a hand in robbing Marks, he'll search his place. There he'll find more of Mark's money and all of Mark's bonds. A frame-up, huh? Yeah, and a good one. Did you have that all set before you went to Mark's house to steal the rest of his money? Sure. No? By sacrificing the bonds and cash Mark's had in his pocket, we'd get away clear with all the hoarded cash. I don't see how your plan helps me. The sheriff thinks Tuttle and I are the thieves. The sheriff doesn't know it yet, but there were two crimes... Two? Sure. Uh -huh. Stealing the cash at Mark's house was the second. The first was when Mark's was on his way home from town. That's when we killed him and robbed him of the bonds. Killed? Yeah. You see, that's a hanging crime. Oh? That's the one the old man will pay for. The bonds in his possession will convict him for sure. Well, Crowder, now I have a story to tell. Well, make it short. All right. When the sheriff returned to town, he found me waiting to talk to him. What? I showed him credentials that convinced him I was no thief. He then agreed to come here and listen to what you had to say. Come here? Yes. He and his deputy had been sitting in the adjoining room, what? just beyond that partly open door. They heard all you said. Well, you double cross. Don't draw. I'll kill you. Not a chance. Oh. Good work, mister. I hoped you'd be able to avoid gunplay. Oh, you hit him plenty hard on chin. Here's his gun, Sheriff. Thanks. Put the handcuffs on him, Deputy. Right. <laughs> I reckon he won't trick me like the mass man did. We'll take him to jail. Then go to the cafe and get his pal. Later that night, the sheriff and his deputy sat in the jail office. That reminds me, Sheriff. The masked man showed you papers that made you sure he's no crook. Yeah. Did the papers tell who he is? They didn't give his name, but they identified him as the Lone Ranger. Copyrighted feature of the Lone Ranger Incorporated is produced by Trendell Campbell Muir Incorporated. The part of the Lone Ranger is played by Brace Beamer. Your announcer, Fred Foy. Listen to the Lone Ranger brought to you by special recording Mondays through Fridays at this same time.